Hello, my friends. It is that time again where we check out a new YouTube channel. A new YouTube channel that you have recommended that I watch. And today, we are looking at one that has been requested pretty much ever since we started this. And that channel is <laughs> Elimation, everybody. Uh, Every time I look at a new channel, I immediately can tell by the comments, like, which channel is the next one that everyone wants me to check out. It's weird. It's like any time I look at the most requested channel, a wow. new most requested channel is, like, so clear to me. Uh, you guys want me to check out Elimation more than anyone else right now. And so, it's time. Another legend of the game. Let's review. Let's look at some of the essential <laughs> viewing. I I don't know what to expect. I have not ever seen an Illimation video before. The most popular video ever. Public school food. If your public school's food looked that bad, it's probably a good thing that 15 million people know about it. Cause some social change, perhaps. Middle school? Fashion? If your fashion in middle school looked like that, it's a good thing 11 million people saw it. Harassed at Chick-fil-A? Work stories? If you were harassed at Chick-fil-A, it's a good thing 9.8 million people. Actually, it probably doesn't work for that one. But we are going to check out these essentials today. Strap in people. I'm ready to have a good time. Are you? Make sure you're subscribed to Illimation after this video. The link will be in the description and at the end. Support the original creator. I'm just here to say wow. silly things, okay? Okay. It's time. Public school food. Robert Eddie K. Illimations. Tres, dos, uno. Aww, what a cute little corn dog nugget. A, a what? Corn dog nuggets? How do you not know what corn dog nuggets are? It's these. Come on, come on. That looks <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, but they were good. Mm. Yo, chill, oh, chill. chill! So are all the photos we're gonna have today, like, gross cafeteria food photos? Are we gonna get any, like, Denny's menu level photos in this? Probably not. It's probably wishful thinking. But I do appreciate someone calling cute animals after silly things. I call rats muffins, because that's what they are. They're my little muffins. When I started kindergarten, my mom would pack my lunch every day. But around first or second grade, my parents said, Alyssa, no more Lunchables. Whoa. <laughs> What do you mean? It's time. And they handed me a check. Listen, the only thing better than your mom coming home with groceries for the week is rolling into school with a fat 20 bucks for the lunch lady. Ooh. Yeah, let me get a rock on the rocks. That's just a cup of ice with a rock in it. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't wanna flex. Oh, see, I don't, I don't know enough about cafeteria food. Do you pay every day in the average cafeteria? I guess that's when people say, give me your lunch money, where that comes from. I don't know if it's a cultural difference, but in Canada where I lived, there weren't like cafeterias that you just bought food at. Like pretty much everyone was expected to bring their own lunch at every school I went to. I was given a lunch number and all throughout grade school, I was 305. Ooh, Miami. I get it, I get it. I remember they wrote it on my hands so I wouldn't forget, but I also remember being really scared that if I washed my hands, it would come off, so I may have been a little nasty that day. <laughs> Speaking of nasty, do y'all remember the smell of the lunchroom? For me, it was like if you walked into Disneyland, but they didn't clean it that day. Like, okay, that one kid puked in the corner again, and the fourth graders are throwing ravioli at the ceiling to see if it sticks. What really matters here is, what is that good smell? What is on the menu? Besides the fan favorite corn dog nuggets, some of Ooh. my favorites included spaghetti and oh, cheeseburger, teriyaki dippers, that's what they called it, I don't know, and rib sandwich. Oh, guys, oh. Can you add like a little bit of saturation? Just some Instagram filter on these photos, please. These desaturated photos, like, these look like school. The sterilized overhead lights, it just looks like school. Why do you think I never use overhead lights anymore, huh? Trauma from school. But when the Lord comes down to personally bless this mess of a North Carolina public school system, he delivers Mac sticks. You take wow. two cheese sticks, any two cheese sticks. You layer bread, cheese stick, bread. You pop it in the oven <sighs> just long enough to melt the cheese. Then you put them in those cute little paper boats. No seasoning. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And to the beholders, you say, Mac sticks? And the kids say, Mac sticks! Mac sticks! Gordon Ramsay feels a feeling he hasn't felt since his mom made him that ratatouille. And he sheds a single meaty tear. 
Match sticks were so good I missed them. Match sticks. Never eaten a match stick. I really hope that wasn't the main meal at lunch. I really hope you had some form of protein or like some vitamin or mineral. I hope at least the flour was enriched flour, you know? That's the thing about feeding children is like, if you feed children and you prevent them from having any actual nutrients or vitamins in their food, in my opinion, that's morally bad. But not every day did the sun shine down on the 39th poorest state for public school funding in the U.S. Some days, we had. Turkey gravy surprise. Sloppy Joe with bun. Green ah! bean. You notice the recurring theme there? It's the sloppy ones. Any food place where you think the quality is gonna be low, getting something sloppy is the last thing I want. Cause you just expect, like imagine it's cold. Those photos looked cold. Oh. Okay, I really need to stop visualizing and manifesting these tastes in my mouth right now. I don't deserve this. By the time I went to high school, the food options changed, but not in the way you'd expect. We had three lunch lines, two for public school food and one that everybody called the rich kid line. Whoa. And that's because when a normal school lunch of chocolate milk, mandarin oranges, and max sticks are $3 total, each individual item in the rich kid line Whoa. was $3 each. And you'd think it'd be a little healthier, but no. From what I remember, they only sold fried greasy foods like chicken sandwiches, popcorn shrimp, and mozzarella sticks. So although it wasn't a full, balanced, or healthy meal by any means, at least it was higher quality, which I means guess. they chose quality over quantity. Depending on what class you had for third period, you were either in first lunch, second lunch, or oh. third lunch. And as someone who always had a theater during third period, let me tell you, Third lunch sucked. Yeah. They always ran out of something, be it chocolate milk, the good tater tots, as well as mostly everything in the rich kid True. Line. You might as well take that government sanctioned 30 minutes to hunt down a squirrel. <laughs> well, please don't. I don't and I don't endorse that. Yeah, that's so true. Cause they don't want to like make extra food that they have to throw away at the end of the day. I support that. I hate wasting food. So I support them only making what they need to. But yeah, the people with third lunch get totally screwed over. That's awful. Chocolate milk for a dollar. At least there is some protein. Like there's some vitamins and minerals in there. Even if you do have your max sticks, at least the chocolate milk is kind of healthy. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's important everybody's kind of healthy. Because honestly, I was a really bad eater as a kid. I like did not get enough nutrients growing up. And I do think some of my physical and mental problems are partially as a result of that. If I ate like I do now as a kid, like if, if I like ate my vegetables properly, as a child, there's no limit to what I could accomplish, people. To make matters worse, we didn't eat till like one o'clock, if I remember correctly. Not to mention, we're burning all kinds of calories in theater, singing and dancing True. and painting set pieces. And because class was in the auditorium, our teacher definitely did not allow snacks. Hey, what the heck are those chips doing in a tree? Hey. <laughs> So by one o'clock, our adolescent bodies were absolutely starving. Thankfully though, the cafeteria was only a quick dash right across the hallway, but the competition was fierce. To our left at the starting line, the kids who had gym. To the uh, south, the band kids and the arts uh, kids. And we were all starving. And in the distance, beyond the fingerprinted glass, we could see there were only five max sticks remaining. No! <laughs> That's anyway, terrifying. let me know what your favorite school food lunches are and send me copycat recipes for Mac sticks on my Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. Eat healthy and stay safe. Oh, does she tell people to eat healthy? Is that a regular thing? Is telling people to eat healthy part of her outro? I would love that. That would make me so happy. I would immediately be on Team Illimation. We're gonna keep going. I, I really hope that's part of the outro. Would have been a great way to tie that into school lunches, you know? Maybe give some tips for kids to maybe like get the most out of it. I mean, based on what she said, I'll give my best advice based on what I could tell from there. I would prioritize the milk. I would prioritize whatever thing looks like it has some semblance of nutrition. Uh, I think chocolate milk is really good because it tastes incredible. It has like the best ratio 
of like tastes good to healthy out of like any food in the world. So like you're not suffering if you if you have it, you know? That's my recommendation there. Anyways, great video. All right, next up, middle school fashion. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty terrifying thumbnail. This video must be pretty darn good if it was successful with this thumbnail. I'm just saying, a bit of a jump scare. If you were playing Five Nights at Freddy's and this face jump scared you, it would be just as scary as the rest of the jump scares. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, here we go. Let's learn about fashion. Look it up. Trois, deux, un. All right. <laughs> I came here for a good time, but I'm honestly feeling so attacked right now. Like many young pizza face preteens, I too felt incredibly self-conscious and honestly ugly during middle school. Since puberty brings dummy fast changes to your mind and body, you never know what you're gonna wake up to. It could be a very nice cream, a very nice rack, or a very big pimple on your nose that won't go away for a week so everyone calls you Rudolph. I'm not salty, I'm just saying it happens. And okay, can I just be old for a second here? All y'all in middle school have it so good right now. See, when I was your age, we didn't have Pinterest. We couldn't just Google up a cute outfit. Oh, we couldn't try okay. it on and post a pic on our Finsta or whatever wardrobe witchcraft y'all are up to. Lee, 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 Lee. Waluigi Stan. Yeah, that one, that one was me, actually. Honestly, the whole thing about how the generation coming up now has phones and a lot more technology and a lot more available to them. I actually don't know how I feel about it. Like, I don't know if I think that makes it easier or if that makes it harder. It's easier in the sense that there's more fun things to do, but it's harder in the sense that there's more fun things to do. <laughs> You know, like, I guess in, in this topic, the topic of fashion, you can learn more and you can have a better idea of what to do. But at the same time, like, I don't know, dude, like, I get so addicted to my phone now as an adult, I can't, I can't imagine how I would be as a kid. We had to go to school wearing what we thought was fashion forward and hope for the best. And to give you an idea of what we thought was fashion forward in 2008, here it is. A tank top from that store with the bird on it, uh -huh. a collared shirt from that store with the bird on it, sure. pastel gingham shorts, no show socks, because socks are lame, and Sperry's. Sperry's! Yeah. But hold up a minute. That's what the popular kids with that bird store money were wearing. The bird store wasn't that expensive though. Like, I genuinely, it wasn't. Like, I got some like $10 t-shirts from the, the bird, bird store. store. She means Hollister. Anyways, I think those shorts are kind of ill, not gonna lie. <laughs> kind of sick. That's what the popular kids with that bird store money were wearing. What if you're quirky and weird and not like other girls and trying to dunk on other girls because being mean makes you cool. Then your closet, aka my closet, looked like this. A shirt with one of those dumb food puns on it. Pastel gingham shorts too, because <laughs> let's be real, I wanted to fit in. A jacket to hide in, no socks at all, because I couldn't figure out where the popular kids bought the no-show socks, <laughs> and Converse. Extra quirky points if your friends wrote some dumb <laughs> all over them. Now, obviously not everyone dressed like this in 2008, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the writing on the Converse, I've seen so many people have that. I bet as I Google this, we're gonna see a lot of like really cool designs. Okay, no, we aren't. Yeah, this is exactly, this is exactly what she's talking about. I used to wear a Converse, but I wore a uh, green Converse because I thought those were sick, which they were, they were totally sick at the time. Green Converse high tops with black skinny jeans. That was your boy. Kind of sick, not gonna lie, it's kind of but yeah, I've seen a lot of people like I think I see this when I go to conventions and I meet viewers I'll see certain kids or teenagers who have shoes that they just wrote all over. I can't imagine I think it's mainly just because my parents would kill me if I did that My parents would kill me if I wrote all over the shoes that they bought me, you know Maybe I would have thought it was cool as a kid if I was allowed to do it I guess I have no way of knowing fashion. I was just in it for the fashion I was just in this for the fashion the truly fashion forward kids were really killing it with skinny jeans boots freaking scarves you know the stuff Whoa. we wear currently and one thing i'm proud i tried and stuck with back then was big glasses the trend of ray-bans was just ramping up and i needed new frames the spongebob glasses just weren't covered <laughs> so what did i do hey sport want me to update your prescription for those spongebob glasses oh, no, 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 no. that won't be necessary doc hmm? 
Okay, what did you have in mind then? Bring me the biggest, thickest glasses you can find. Which was a great idea, because now look at what everyone's wearing. Now you have a character design. Yay! Big, sometimes fake, glasses in the name of fashion. And that was all thanks to me. Just kidding. That was a SpongeBob reference. I'm gonna start calling these out, because like I feel like more than half of the animators we have looked at have done subtle SpongeBob references. Spon SpongeBob season two and three references, and it makes me so happy. Let me show you exactly what she's referencing here, very subtly. It's big, scary, and pink! So is Patrick's butt, but I ain't afraid of that neither. <laughs> That's awesome. So is Patrick's butt. <laughs> That's so fun. Thank you for that reference. Uh, I didn't even realize how close to the original, to the original uh, it was. Big, sometimes fake glasses in the name of fashion. And that was all thanks to me. Just kidding. No, but seriously, wearing big glasses really helped me feel a lot better about the way I looked, and it got me closer to figuring out how to express myself through what I wore. Aww. Finding your style is all about trial and error. Which brings me to my next point, my emo phase. After an inspirational Google search of scene girls, I realized it was- do I, do I recognize any of these people? <laughs> do I recognize any of these people? Uh, I don't think so. When I was a, a young boy. teenager, I was into the, I mean, come on. I mean, I've, I've talked about this before. I was never like a true emo kid. Like I never like, probably cause I was antisocial. I like never went to the mall and like bought Hot Topic clothes and stuff. Like I just could never really go hard with it. But I wanted to be like a scene kid so bad. After an inspirational Google search of scene girls, I realized it was time to dye my hair, put on some makeup and that I might like girls. But <laughs> it didn't exactly work out. One, being not heterosexual in the South is tough. Two, makeup is scary. And three, I'm a natural redhead. And after 30 minutes of minimal research, I discovered the ginger gene in our family is given to every other generation's firstborn on the mother's side. So only Whoa. me, my cousin, and my grandma have red hair in my family, and only 3% of the world's population has red hair. Therefore, my mom did not want me to dye my hair. <laughs> and my mom told me that if I dyed my hair, it, quote, wouldn't grow back the same. And That's because I was true. an idiot, I thought she meant that if I dyed my hair purple, it would keep growing purple. <laughs> So, no, I've never dyed my hair, and frankly, I'm kind of afraid to. But we did find a compromise on my emo look. That is kind of true, right? Red hair is rare. It, wait a minute, does Illy have Irish jeans? Like your boy here? I actually, it's so funny, dude. I never think about this, but most of my cousins have red hair. Most of my cousins have like the ginger jeans because we're Irish, but my family, we didn't get it because it was my dad's sisters. My dad's two sisters have red hair. My dad got like hair that started kind of blondish red and then turned brown like mine. And so his kids, me, I didn't get it. But I could have been, I could have been a redhead. Anyways, it's rare. And so, yeah, I think it's cool to embrace it. I mean, hey, if you're, if you're a redhead and you want to dye your hair, go ahead. You know, it doesn't, you know, do, do what makes you the happiest. But I do think embracing what makes you unique and learning to love the things that are different about you, I think that makes you the most happy in the long run. But if you want to experiment, go ahead. I mean, I, you, you know, come on. We did find a compromise on my emo look, and that's how I ended up looking like this. Don't wow. worry, guys, I did not ask to speak to the manager after this haircut. I wanted to look like this, and I thought it looked good. So now equipped with the dumbest haircut in the world <clears> and the confidence of a middle school boy drenching himself an axe body spray instead of showering, the last thing I needed to complete this emo look was makeup. Which is scary. I'm gonna be real with you guys, I'm 21 and I still don't understand makeup. And again, you preteens have it so good right now. Cause YouTube makeup tutorials were not a thing in 2008. True. But you know what was a thing? Going to the makeup counter at the mall with your mom and asking some 50 year old lady to beat my face. But <laughs> spoiler alert, that 50 year old lady at the makeup counter didn't give me the emo look I was hoping for. Oh man. Yeah, I've never thought about that. Young girls and people who want to start wearing makeup. There's so many tutorials, you didn't have video tutorials. There weren't like TV shows about how to put on makeup. You had to have like someone teach you like in person. Wow, true. Okay, that is way easier now. That is way easier. That 50 year old lady at the makeup counter didn't give me the emo look I was hoping for. And that's because 2008 mainstream makeup looked like this. Blue eyeshadow, rosy red cheeks, and glossy pink lips. 
which honestly wouldn't have been too bad if my eyebrows and eyelashes weren't blonde. <laughs> See, you'd think someone who does makeup for a job would realize, oh, this pasty lizard has translucent <laughs> eyebrows and eyelashes. Perhaps I should offer her something like an eyebrow pencil or black mascara, but no. I'm gonna make her look like the clown from IT. She spins me around, beats my face for half an hour, shows me the mirror, and says, what do you think? What do I think? I think my mom told me not to use bad words in public. <laughs> I think I should try it for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. <laughs> but what do I know about makeup? Nothing, that's why I came here. And although I knew this looked awful, it's not like I knew how to make it look better. Oh. So like any anxious preteen, I said, wow, I love Blue. So she got her paycheck and I went to school looking like a clown, literally. Halfway through the day though, I remember I just washed it all off. Aww. Even though I was trying really hard to look a certain way, I knew inside that this just wasn't working. And I'd rather be true to myself and try something again next time than go forth with something that didn't make me feel like me. So if you're in middle school, going through puberty, feeling weird about how you look, keep in mind that you'll probably look different tomorrow. The clothes you wear and the things you try should always make you feel comfortable, express who you are and what you enjoy. And if anyone makes you feel small for that, they're not you. So don't listen to Boom. them. Do you, because that's what matters. Boom! I agree, I agree. I already talked a, a bit about clothes in school when you're growing up, stuff like that. Uh. And that was in this Odd Ones Out video. If you wanna hear my thoughts on how I dressed in middle school, how I feel about dressing in middle school, growing up and discovering my sense of style and fashion and whatever, we talk a, a good bit about it in that video. So I won't repeat myself too much. But yeah, literally, you wear what you want to wear, period. Wear what you want to wear, period. And I mean, yeah, do it because you like it, not because you think other people will like it. A lot of people try, they try to be different so that other people will think it's cool, but that different is like, a, it's a version of their themselves that they're like trying to be rather than just being themselves. No matter what, if you are true to yourself and represent yourself as authentically as possible, there are going to be people who love that and love the way that you represent yourself and love your style and love how you view the world and everything. So yeah, being yourself is always just the right way to do it. All right, I've been really happy with both videos so far. I think they've been really nice and kind of uplifting while also being silly and fun. And I want to close it out with the classic animation story format. Work stories! Every animator needs to tell stories from their first jobs. You gotta do it. I don't know why it's so fun. It's almost always like one of my favorite videos topics because it's always like a unique experience but also kind of relatable if you've worked in service with people like your boy so people let's hit it harass it chick-fil-a work stories i probably shouldn't sound excited for that title but you know you know what it is <laughs> one five seven hey don't touch me there this is my no-no square stop stop No, but seriously, we all learned that for a reason. It's bad to touch people, especially in their no-no square. Duh, Illy. Harassment is illegal. Yeah, duh. But it still happens, even where you least expect it. What? Chick-fil-A. That's the type of harassment she was talking about? Oh no. Okay, I definitely can't laugh about that title. I hope this is lighthearted and she's okay. Okay? Let's go! What? Chick-fil-A. Yep, home of Jesus' favorite chicken sandwich. Exposed! Well, no, it's not their fault. It was this one guy who worked there. He? He touched me there. He touched- <laughs> I don't have any sense of rhythm. Anyway, so this guy's name was... Jimmy. He was hired around the same time as I was, and we worked a lot of the same shifts. And at first he was just... whatever. Just some guy that I saw Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. before going to class from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Oh boy! But about two months in, my coworker pulls me aside and says, Hey, watch out for Jimmy. He's been groping me and other girls in the back kitchen where no one can see. Pfft. Well, why didn't they just say no? Oh, my silly misogynistic friend. You see... <laughs> 
Don't make this funny, Illy. Don't make it funny. So far, that sounds terrible. And hopefully there were security cameras and hopefully he got caught. I He has to have. And if he got caught, there should be like actual like, I mean, he would lose his job, obviously. But like, I wonder if he can like get charged further for that. I don't know, but that you can't do that. Why didn't they just tell a manager? Oh, that one's easy. <laughs> well, why didn't they just fire him? Touching is bad. <laughs> Nobody, maybe because they didn't this. <laughs> May I direct you to the FFAQ, the female frequently asked questions. After a few shifts, it happened to me. It started small and innocent. He'd get really touchy when talking to me. He'd surprise poke me dangerously close to my butt. And finally, one day, he walked behind me, but he didn't just casually stroll on by. No, 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 no. He rested his hands on my shoulders, dug his fingers into my shirt so I couldn't move, and thrusted his no-no square against my no-no square. And for some personal reference, I was in an abusive relationship for five years. I know the difference between an honest mistake and a purposeful, disgusting choice of behavior. Oh, wow. I definitely have to get into a different state of mind for this one. Did you hear, guys, did you hear how I hyped this one up? I was like, yay, work stories. Everyone's favorite stories, yay. So fun, so funny. We get to imagine if we were in their situations. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was did, is this not what I was expecting this to be? I really hope there's a good ending, but obviously there's not a good middle. And I decided from then on that I would fight back. So what did I do to Jimmy? Did I- Spinning him? elbow. Did I kick him in the nuts? Did I scream for Chicken Jesus to smite him? Vote now on your phones. Oh, is there one- One punch. I would say this is the- Wait, I don't know what the third- I don't know what this is here. Um, but I think- I think this. I- I vote B. Fi final answer. Time's up. No, no, no. Sorry, I did something much worse. <gasps> Don't you touch me ever again. Uh, oh, okay. And he never messed with me again. Yes! <laughs> Woo! Yes! Success! Good for you, Illy. That takes some honest bravery, honestly. Like, I'm good, like, good, good for you, Illy. And anyone, if that ever happens to you, something like that, it can be scary. And it's hard to just stand up for yourself right away because you don't trust, these people are weird. You don't trust, you don't know, like, what they, what they would do. But yeah, people had brought this up to the managers already and nothing think that's terrible. At that point, it's like, do you get a different job? If the managers aren't doing something about it, that's bad. And he never messed with me again or made eye contact. Sounds like a win to me. But look, contrary to popular belief, it is not very easy to say, look, dude, I I'm just trying to restock the Christian mayonnaise. I, I, I really don't think that involves grabbing my boobs and my can Can you please just stop? P pretty please? <laughs> Why not? All you have to do is say no. <laughs> oh, my silly victim shaming friend. You see, that's not part of the job. And it's not my job to tell him that. I shouldn't even be dealing with this, especially yep. at Jesus' favorite fast food yep. eatery. God bless. Go in peace. Seriously, I, ugh. I don't know about you, but when a stranger bumps into me out of nowhere, I get a little spooked, and it's a whole other terrifying experience to be touched in your no-no square by a stranger where no one can see what happened and where it's your word against his. And he knows that. That's why he did it. He knows he'll get away with it. And guess what? He did. So all we have left in terms of defense is warning each other about these kinds of people and dealing with it until someone believes us and gets rid of him. And to people like you who question the credibility of all of us coming forward, rather questioning the character of these kinds of people, boy do I have news for you. You're not helping, you're not helping, your friend sent you this song cause you're not helping. Look, if your friend came up to you and said, help, this guy just punched me in the face, would you say, uh, look, he's a good guy. Whatever he did, maybe you just took it the wrong way. 
D dude, he punched me right here. Yeah, you say that, but I'm sure you just got in a fight and now you regret it. Man, this really goes without saying. Like when I when I hear something like this, in my mind it's like I shouldn't have to expand upon this because because it's common sense. But really, for some reason, it is not always common sense to some people. If someone gets attacked in any way, just unprovoked, un requested, attacked, punched, touched inappropriately, anything like that, there is no place for you to take any position or side here than supporting them. You know, any kind of like, well, you shouldn't have talked to that person, you shouldn't have been near that person because they're bad and you should have known. No, 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 no. No, they shouldn't be the bad person in the first place. You shouldn't have to worry about that. Attacking and inappropriately touching people, that should be common sense to never do, obviously. But the next level down there, if you if you blame the person who gets attacked and you aren't there to support them, that is also bad. Dude, he punched me right here. Yeah, you say that, but I'm sure you just got in a fight and now you regret it. Wait, 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 what? Well, I'm sure if he really did punch you, that he'd be fired. Punching is wrong. <laughs> Duh. Oh my god, why am I even friends with you? Hey, don't use the Lord's name in vain. Bruh. We're in a holy place. God bless. Eventually, I left, not entirely because of him, but because I got an internship. Yay! And here I am now, in my own little no-no square. My closet. Yay! I definitely did not click on that video with the intention of talking about no-no squares. Also, no-no square was definitely not a term that I grew up hearing. I feel, is that a new term or is that an America term and in Canada we didn't say it? Any 20 plus year old Americans in the chat, please let me know. Is no-no square something you grew up saying? Because I did not ever hear that until the last few years. Anyways, I didn't intend on talking about it. But with that that being said, I think it's great that Illy does make videos about topics like this because, well, it's nice to keep animation fun and crazy and wacky and silly. Having messages like this is important because these things happen in the real world, in real life. So I do think it's cool that Illy does videos like this about serious topics. And for that, homie, here we go. Oh! Oh! Great channel, Illy, thank you for making such great videos and also videos about important topics. It seems as though Illy is a great person in this community and thank you for requesting that I check her out. And homies, now it's your turn. Go subscribe to Illymation. These videos take a lot of work to do by her and she deserves your support. Make sure you are supporting the original creator. Here is the last animation reaction we did. If you have not seen it, make sure you check it out. It was a very fun time. And here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like in particular. Are they right? You let me know, homies. I will see you very soon. Peace. Uh, uh.